Hello and welcome. I'm Nutaf, and here we are again with another episode of Dark Souls Science. Since we are on the eve of Bloodborne, maybe this is the last one? Uh, who knows? So, at PAX East this year, we hung out with a guy called Void the Dark, who said that the amount of stability damage you do when kicking is affected by the type of weapon you're wielding. So, I got curious about this, and uh, here we are. We're going to check it out. Before we really get started with the findings, let's have a word on the testing methodology. All the tests were done using a cracked round shield plus zero, weighing in at a whopping 30 stability. Uh, well, most of the tests were. You'll, you'll see later. My character had the standard max stamina of 160 points, and I didn't use the ring of favor and protection. I was around level 120, but I don't remember, and it turns out it doesn't matter. Um, I would block, and my partner in crime, Snoopy, uh, would kick me uh, with different weapons in his on hand and we measured how many pixels of stamina were consumed from my stamina bar. Due to the interpolation between frames or something, uh, sometimes I had a margin of error up to about plus or minus four pixels, but the numbers lined up so well most of the time that I could pretty much tell what the game meant. There are 292 pixels in the stamina bar at 720p resolution, and that means that one pixel is about 0.55 stamina points. That's such a weird number that for the rest of this video I'm going to do my measurements in pixels, not stamina points. For part one, we varied a bunch of factors using a single weapon for testing to see how much stability damage is dealt with a kick. For this test we selected the longsword, about as standard a weapon as you can get, though some may say it's exceptional. The only factor we found that mattered was the upgrade level. At plus zero, the longsword specifically does 84 pixels of stability damage. Now, we didn't measure every upgrade level, uh, but maybe, maybe we should have, but it doesn't really matter because nobody uses anything less than max upgrade anyway. For the other upgrade paths, they follow a similar pattern. Divine, Magic, and Fire plus zero do the same as uh, standard upgrade plus five. That's 132 pixels. Regular plus ten does 176 pixels, which is the same as Divine, Magic, and Fire plus five and also the same as Occult, Enchanted, Chaos, Lightning, and Crystal plus zero. The pattern continues with regular plus 15 doing 220 pixels, which is the same as the max upgrades of all the other paths. The notable exception, if you've been paying attention, is Raw, which does 148 uh, pixels of st stability damage at plus zero and 192 at plus five. Uh, but nobody really uses Raw anyway, so who cares? For Dragon, Demon, and Twinkling upgrade weapons, plus 5 is the equivalent of uh, plus 15 for normal upgrade weapons. Uh, some of those uh, special weapons max out at 220 uh, pixels at uh, plus 5 upgrade. And now for a whole bunch of things that don't affect the kick stability damage you deal. Uh, using the weapon two-handed or one-handed makes no difference. Being influenced by the Dragon Roar buff doesn't really help, and uh, along with that, just being in Dragon form doesn't help. Buffs such as Crystal Magic Weapon and Sunlight Blade, those are the two we tested, uh, don't do anything. Wearing the orange Catholic ring doesn't help either. How much humanity you have when you're using a Chaos Weapon doesn't make any difference. Uh, whether you're at zero humanity or 99, it's the same. And this applies to the Chaos Blade as well. And how much strength and dex your character has makes no difference. We tested with a 34 strength, 24 dex character, and also a 40 strength, 40 dex character. In part two, we checked every single weapon in the game at max upgrade level, and we found that the amount of stability damage dealt is related to the specific weapon being held when kicking. To some extent, this is related to the weapon class, uh, such as a greatsword, hammer, dagger, and so on, but it doesn't follow a true pattern that we could, uh, any that we could find, so it's more likely a hidden stat per weapon. Now, I'm not going to show every single weapon's footage, because that would take forever and I'm too lazy for that. But instead, here's a pretty graph sectioned out by weapon class showing how much stability damage uh, each one does. I'll upload the full data and screenshots along with the video. Most weapons do the standard amount, uh, 220 pixels. Some classes, such as hammers, are consistently lower. But other individual weapons vary higher or lower just by a little bit within their class. I might as well call out the outliers now. The crystal straight sword earns the dubious honor of being even lower than an unarmed kick, even lower than a longsword plus zero. If it weren't already before, it's now hereby cemented as probably the worst weapon in the game, truly a weapon fit only for cheaters. The Dragon Slayer's spear is at the other end of the spectrum, dealing so much stability damage that it immediately broke my guard with the crack round shield plus zero. 
Ah, so I had to take a few new measurements to get a baseline for comparison. Well, here we go. The longsword plus 15 against a plank shield plus 0 does 172 pixels of damage. And the dragon slayer spear against that pl same plank shield did 284 pixels. If we make some uh, assumptions about how stability factors into the stamina calculation, we can extrapolate this uh, to say that the dragon slayer spear would do about 363 pixels of stamina damage to the cracked round shield plus 0. And that's uh, 199 stamina damage, not pixels. That puts it far ahead of all the other weapons. Why the Dragon Slayer Spear? Who knows? It's completely arbitrary. So, those are our findings. Stay away from the Crystal Straight Sword, pick up a Dragon Slayer Spear and get to kicking, and make sure to upgrade all your weapons. Thanks again to Void the Dark for suggesting the idea, to Snoopy T7 for not only being my testing partner, but also gathering and upgrading all the weapons and helping extract the per-weapon screenshots from, from the footage. That, that was a lot of work. Yeah, check him out. He's got some Dark Souls Science videos of his own. And finally, we, we would be remiss in not giving a shout-out to Frank the Frog, who tried to come over and play many times during our testing. Oh, poor Frank. Alright, thanks for watching. And uh, since the timing is right, hopefully you all will come watch my Bloodborne Blind Run, which will be starting the evening of April 3rd. If the the Dark Souls 2 run that I did similarly is any indication, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, see you guys later.